that did not turn out the way we wanted it to, the way we desired it to be, the way we prayed it would be. So when we say little things like we got to get better than that, we got to just be honest. Some of that just ain't in us. It ain't in some of us. You know, I don't sugarcoat nothing. It just ain't there. We can't keep squeezing a lemon, trying to get lemonade. Mm -mm. We done squeezed that lemon so much, man, ain't no more in it. And you guys got to make up in your mind who you want to be in. Those of you that uh, fought to the end and gave it your all, I'm very, very proud of you. I really am. Those of you who didn't, we are looking to replace you as I speak. Coach Prime is presented by Chevy Silverado. The losing streak is now at two games a stark contrast to the hot start the Tigers enjoy. The writing on the wall is clear. The offense needs a spark. Sooner or later, when these players show you who they are, you've got to believe them, guys. Mm -hmm. You're trying to turn water into wine, and that's wonderful. I think you guys are the best coaches in the nation, and I'm not just saying that. I really believe that. But you got to understand what you're dealing with, and it is what it is to a point in time, and sooner or later, before you walk away, try everything you can, but when you walk away, don't turn back around. Let's get Quincy, guys. Right. My brother. What you want to do, man, with yourself, like, playing this game? If he wants to do this, have an opportunity to compete and challenge for the starting job, you got to take this more serious. You got to live this. You got to embody this, man. You got to engulf yourself in it. You can't just casually show up. You got to approach this, like, you're the guy. You already jumped in the back of the car. You just back there sleep riding, and you waiting for us to say we here. And all you gotta do is put up a fight. Fight. You fight to get in. Mm-mm. No. Mm -hmm. You're trying to win. You're trying to dominate. You're trying to be successful. You're trying to lead. And that was the basis of the foundation of the message, because he just casually meanders through life as if somebody gonna give you something. Somebody give you anything, it ain't worth having because you ain't earned it. We trust you. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying before you answer now. Do you trust you enough to know that you know what we know with this offense? Can we go out there and line up and you can run this offense without us? Are you on the sideline somewhere or just, I don't know, you a spectator. You need to be involved. That's it, my bro. Get your game yes, together, sir. man. Yes, sir. It's the reason that quarterbacks are paid handsomely way uh, above any other position in the NFL. There's a reason for that. The confidence, it comes with the preparation. So when I see steps at practice, I'm more and more confident. I didn't see a lot of positive steps in the last few weeks. And we've just had a couple of plays that didn't go our way. I mean, listen, we, we, we know what's going to happen in the fall. And everybody, you know, that's got a pulse knows what's going to happen. But we got a, we got a spring schedule, and we got to win. Stay ready. You know, prepare yourself like you are the starter. So when your time comes, you flourish in those moments. What's your game there? I got you. Okay. I got you. Still game there. Pretty much right now, you, you got athletes like Quincy, and they're fighting to prove themselves worthy to be on the roster next year. This year is almost over. We, it, it, it ain't too much more you can show us that we hadn't seen at practice. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to be about it. And they got to be about it. After losing their last two games, Quincy Casey, number eight, gets the nod this week as the starting quarterback for Jackson State. Quincy can spin it. Quincy has a tremendous arm. I think we all agree upon that. Um, he gives us a, a different approach to throwing the ball. You know, they rotated some last year. 
and I think they kind of felt like they'd probably end up still rotating. And, you know, I've made it crystal clear with them. I'm not a rotating guy. We're going to find us a quarterback, and that's who we're going to play. Quincy's the more pure passer, to be honest with you. He can throw the ball better. He spins it better. When he's locked in and dialed in, he makes better reads. But right, the problem with him is he's not always dialed in and locked in to what's going on. He gets distracted by some of the, the surroundings and everything. I understood why I wasn't a starter um, after, you know, after they explained it. Yeah, it was no hard feeling. You know what I'm saying, like I said, I just wanted what was best for the team. And, and they felt like that was what was best, so I rode with it. Quincy just got to get serious about this opportunity and understand where this opportunity could take it. We just got to find a spark for the offense. And uh, when you play quarterback, then that's the position a lot of times that you got to change to find that spark. We've been kind of stagnant. You never can tell when your number's going to be called, and this, your number's being called this week. It means a lot. Um, and this is coming from a guy who's been the starter here before. It, it comes with pressure, and it's going to come with even more pressure now because Coach Prime I just want to go out there, play football, win the game. We just needed a change, you know, just to, to get some, some new life into our offense and into, into our team to give us a new voice in the hub on, on that side of the ball. I'm excited, just uh, trying not to think about it too much, you know what I mean, let it get to me. Just go out here and, and play just like it's a regular game, you know right. what I mean? I'm very confident in my ability and confident in, you know, my coaches, and, and I believe that they'll, they'll make the right calls, you know what I'm saying, the right situation. Change is a part of life, part of the game. And while the coaching staff has been deliberate about their change, the onus is now on the team leaders to govern themselves. What y'all want? We need some team bonding. Yes, we do. Y'all yeah, should have bonded that there uh, in the fourth quarter. Y'all should have bonded again. And now we want to bond. <laughs> now, now we want to be better. Now we want to be bowling, bowling. We got to do some team activities. Yeah, y'all should have team activities. Yeah, 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 activity. It's called a game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. It's a great team activity. If you want to work together, just doing that team activity. It's a team activity called the last drive. That's the defense should work together. Yeah, they rushed for 209 yards on that team activity. Okay. Yeah, what about that team activity? Wow. 257 yards passing in that team activity. Uh -huh. Now y'all want to bump. We had 19 for 50. Now, what about that team activity? Y'all didn't get together on that team activity. Right. And we had the ball for 29 minutes and 56 seconds of team activity. All right, but to prevent that, I think we need a bomb. Though. Third yeah. down conversion, six of 20 on that team activity. It was five of 12, which is actually good. Yeah. So what y'all trying to say? Get these brothers more together, like, like you know what I'm saying? I feel mm -hmm. like there's people on the team that don't really know. Like, I don't even know all on my them. teammates' names still. Yeah, me either. See? <laughs> we need a bomb or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's real bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real bullet. It's a real bullet. You know what? Let the coaches go to with y'all. We, we want to pay balls. We're going to pick the ones that we want to pay balls. You know? <laughs> Didn't do that. <laughs> the first shot going to be real. <laughs> uh, appreciate you, Coach. Appreciate you, Coach. man. But I, I, I like that they're thinking like that because they know they're, they're missing one important thing. But they, they're not finishing. But that's because we're not accountable and we don't trust one another. And team bonding may get us closer to that trust and that accountability. So I do like it. But I had to, I had to go at him a little bit on a team bond after we got that butt kick. The heart and soul of any good football team is the offensive line, and the heart and soul of a good offensive lineman. It's fishing and a home cooked meal. Good, man. Good, man. Good, man. Good, man. Good, man. You know, food laid out. Food laid out. There's plenty of napkins over here, guys. There's plenty of napkins over here. They like to lick their fingers. I can't, okay. <laughs> okay, they like to lick their fingers. They go home with their fingers. All right, you're going to lick your fingers after you get to eat what I cook. Well, guys, we're glad to have y'all here with us today, and we thank y'all for welcoming our son, Dylan, into um, the HBCU. Yes, ma'am. I know some of y'all may not be from here, so it's like we got like, y'all extra moms and dad here. We're here for you all, too. Okay? Oh, yeah. oh yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank good, you. good. You know, he, he, he family now. Oh, yeah. He family yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, Besides driving trucks, I love to cook. Yeah, he do. He loves to We don't cook. use microwaves yeah. or nothing like that. He's know. our chef. You know, none of that. None of that. Hold on, now. 
And the sky's the limit for you fellas. You know, y'all got a great coach, y'all a great team. So y'all just keep your mind straight, stay focused, stay on the right track, and keep your blueprint. And the sky's the limit for y'all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. And then it's always life after football. It is, always. Always life after football. Yes. Right. Put us back on the map. map. These HBCUs, we love it. We That's need right. it. Put us out there. I got a question. OK. What's the recipe to that burger? Oh. <laughs> What's that recipe? <laughs> See, if I tell you the recipe to the burger, man, you're going to have to come to stay at the house. <laughs> you had to come to the house. Look, I told my son, I told him, now, do you eat burgers right here? He don't even know what all I put in it. <laughs> I don't believe in cooking, you know, being upset, uh, angry, or nothing like that, because I'm cooking with love. That come from the heart, so. What I did for y'all is what I do for my home. I ain't even bite the sandwich. I just swallowed it. <laughs> See, if the wind wasn't here, I'm telling you, I've been pulling some catfish, some brim, white punch out of the water. I done had it, it would have been a show. Three, I think them was... See, look, here, here comes come throwing... come the expert. Here comes the expert. Y'all just throwing it and then bringing it back in. They ain't gonna see the real thing, baby. You better not use that whole worm, but you better. Let me, let, let me show you something. The way you put your worm on a hook. Man, you don't need all that worm. Look, 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 man. I'm Down the middle of the worm. So you don't need that all that worm. I ain't gonna use all that worm, see? Man, see, I'm a professional at this. So I've been fishing for some years. I, I have two. I, I ain't no rookie at this. I have two. The wind, man, messing yeah. me up. Yeah, that wind ain't gonna kill him, man. Yeah, that wind, you know, it's killing the. So me and my uh, my guy Tony, you know, we were real close at first when he first came down here. We and me and him had gotten into it one day at practice, and that kind of escalated into the locker room. I guess Coach heard all the commotion. He called me in there, but he helped me out like with the situation. He told me can't worry about nobody else, be my own person, you know, stay out of the way, just handle my business, and I'll be called first round to the NFL if I keep doing, keep putting on the show. And you're striving to be a great person, a great man. He's teaching you all how to be a great man. You're very educated, so you're keeping up with your education. And then we know you want to make it to the NFL. You want to play football, but you continue to be focused and driven. And the sky's the limit, son. It's out there for you. Sky's the limit to whatever you want. Can't nobody, what God got for you, can't nobody take it. That's true. That's all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the team bonding is learning to leave the past behind. And Tony and Dylan, they headed to a break room to do exactly that. We're like a fireman and a, um, a pilot Wait, at the same time. They show my QB skills, you know what I'm saying? Man. He ain't finna hit that. Oh, all right. It's too all right. easy. I throw one. First one. First one, man. Everybody QB one, one, man. You call me QB one, one <laughs> man. Oh, oh, oh. QB. Oh, go Tom Brady. Tom Brady. I'm Jason. He, um, Freddy got it. He Freddy, but you know, you know who won that battle, though? Who won that battle out of Jason and Fred? Didn't Jason win? Fred won that one. No, Jason won, sir. Next year, we're going to be good, though, for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, we play on the same side? Yeah. Both of us at the left? They're going to be lit, though. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be too lit. <laughs> Go. Right you got him. You got Big Dad. Big Dad, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Put that mama right now, oh, man. Damn, hell, man. Nah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it, though. That's a wrap. Oh, yeah. Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. And so look, this museum, it covers a 30-year period of the Mississippi Civil Rights Movement. And so look, um, after the war, right, was the start of the Reconstruction period. 
Russ College came first in 1866, and the Jackson State University came in 77. These institutions, right, they educated us. There were no other institution for us. And so, look, they were put there to educate our people. If it wasn't for a Jackson State, a Alcorn, a Tougaloo, a Howard, you wouldn't see what you see today. One of the glaring things uh, for me was watching the museum, the photos of all the activists and the people that participated in marches. They were these guys' age. You know, there was a lot of young kids back then that stood up and took a stand for what was right. And so the, the, the immediate question for those guys were, what are you guys standing up for? You know, what are you willing to die for, really, given today's times, um, seeing what your grandparents and even some, in some incidents your parents had to endure in order to get you to this point, why aren't you doing a better job taking advantage of these opportunities that you're getting right now? This represent or the people of Mississippi letting that light shine. When you stand in a purple session, it lights up light blue. See? That's cool. Uh-huh. That's cool. And it lets you know everyone has their own light to shine. Uh, but the more people that stand in a session, the brighter the light gets. We can accomplish so much more when we all just do what? Come together. Come together, Come together right? Yeah, you mm -hmm. Come here with it. Mm -hmm. All right, come, come on, baby. Uh, Martin Luther King once said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So standing together in love, it feeds darkness by letting our light shine. My people went through, through that pain and the struggle. And just to see uh, they still have some stuff around just to show like what they went through. I, I, that's motivation for me to keep going now. Like I know I'm doing this for more than myself, but a lot of people in the HBC. I know you're up for any challenge. We've True. been together for over a decade, but this is not going to be easy. I second the motion. But we're built for this. You know, to change the uh, culture, to change the environment, you got to change the people. And I don't know if the people are ready for change. There's a lot of folks say it. A lot of folks talk about it. But a lot of folks don't want to be about it because Everybody ain't built for the moment. Everybody ain't built for sports. It, it's, the moment is something that, that comprises who we are, what we are, how we are, why we are. And you, we, we ball at a whole nother level, baby. We, we, we used to dominate, man. We used to just bring it. We used to, no excuses. So, Everybody else got to understand this ain't yesterday. This ain't yesterday. We we get ready to do a new thing. It's been a week since Tim Robinson's season-ending knee injury, but the young defensive back is on the mend after surgery, and gets a visit from some of his teammates. What you what you been doing today? Had therapy, chilling like this. So what they gonna do when you have surgery? Next Tuesday. It was like a pain I couldn't even describe. As soon as it happened, I felt my knee just disappear. Like, I just felt my knee move. And I tried to roll over and get up. I felt my leg dang, man. I said, yeah, I tore it off. I seen it, bro. Hey, I was right there. I just I seen, seen that leg. I, like, I, I just seen it hanging over I, like that. I thought you more of a, like, panic. Like, I thought, I thought, I I thought you made it worse because you were panicking. Like, you started screaming. I heard you scream. Oh, oh boy. You screamed. You screamed. I, I turned my over. head, though. I just started praying immediately. That was definitely bro. what I did. I called a whole D-line over there. I was like, let's pray real quick. I swear. That's crazy, bro. And it, it was so crazy because you was working your way into, like, playing. No, I was playing that week. I was starting on every sports, special team, still pump turn, and I was getting play time. Yeah, everything happened for a reason. And then, like, with that, it's, a lot of people take a lot of stuff as a, a loss and not a lesson, you feel me? You, I, I take it as a lesson. That's something I've been trying to take, yeah. Take it as a lesson, bro. How y'all like it growing up in Jackson, though? Like? Hey. I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> it's a yeah. hated it. Because, like, I was the first person in 10 years that went to Jim Hill that got a scholarship. Like, that deep. The first person in 10 years. 10 years, bro, to get anything with sports. I worked hard, but growing up in Jackson, it's cool. You got to learn how to be strong. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you get ate up with, like, just different situations. Right. 
Like, you gotta be strong. I think New Orleans like that in a way, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have... I, I could see some similarities between New Orleans and Jackson, though, like, just being here for the last couple of years. What I see, bro, in Jackson, like, Jackson just, like, everywhere else, everybody got their all uh, everywhere the same. But, like, what Jackson is, but Jackson really ain't... It ain't nothing here, like, we the celebrities here. And Jack, Jackson yeah. State, I look at us, we the celebrity, we the only team here, like, we the only really... Professional team. Oh, yeah, we the professional team. Yeah, like, we the only thing really, like, this positive like going on in Jackson. Like, I take, like, we got to really, like, just hone in and soak everything up and take what Coach Prime doing serious, because, like, like, this can really, like, change my city around. It's back to work for the Tigers. Coach Prime is fired up, and not for a good reason. Players have been sloppy, practicing in mismatched uniforms. If the players can't be disciplined on their own, the job falls on the coach. Who's responsible for letting this all come out here and look like this? When have I ever condoned this? But so what we're giving is the same, but what y'all giving ain't. Y'all see the difference? Team, family, structure, no individual. Even that businessman, he has to dress in proper attire. He can't come in some jeans and kick it. You guys are tailing down right now. You're not trending up. Trending down, it seems like you're top down. And it ain't nowhere else to go. What are we supposed to do if you keep taking, taking, taking? We gonna keep giving. <laughs> so if somebody's taking you and taking you, you gonna keep on giving to them? Look, well, ain't nobody here, no thug and no jeep. I ain't saying I want It's not right, man. I know some of y'all come from programs that's plentiful, but we're not that program. Not of yet. Not of yet. So you can't keep taking and taking. You gotta be respectful, responsible for everybody else. Three years. I can't wait to see what some of us are. <laughs> I can't wait. Because being unknown for me, it don't, it ain't cool. It ain't, no, but it ain't cool. Especially when you ain't done nothing, you ain't gave us a snap. When you ain't gave us a snap, it ain't cool, dog. Joey, we don't been down the street one time before. We could go down here again. You came to my office. Remember? I didn't come to your office. You came to my office saying, I want to do this, coach. I came to your office. Shit, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, let's do it again. One thing that we can't do, we can't, we can't miss what we never had, fellas. And what we're trying to do is find kids with character. Don't come to the office again. Don't do it again. Who want to join? Let's get it over with. Someone being the individual that ain't gave us nothing ain't going to win it for us. That's the individual. That's not a team guy. You should be the most humble person in here. You ain't gave us nothing. They ain't gave y'all nothing. And y'all let that go down. Y'all can go so many places, but until y'all get together as a team and try to work it as a team and understand as a team that we're going to bond together and we're going to do this. And don't let nobody come between that. Come on, fellas. Athletes ain't gangsters, and gangsters ain't athletes. Junior Miller's dismissal sends a shockwave throughout the entire locker room. The always vocal Arby Miller makes one last effort to salvage his fellow disciples' spot on the team. I don't, I don't ever say nothing, Coach, like, throughout this time to you or anything, you, do. you always say something. Like, as far as the things he done said to coaches and, and the way he done. Yo, hold on, hold on. We talking about Junior. Y'all go by talk. We go by actions. So your actions are who you are. Like, your actions are who you are. And sooner or later, we got to believe your actions. He already gave you one shot, not you, but him. And he came right in there, humbled himself, begged to come back. That's disrespectful. We can't put up with that. You got to stop that, my brother. I'm going to tell you what your problem is. You always get into somebody else's thing. You got to do your thing. We worried about you doing your job, nobody else's job. You got to do your job so you own the field. Yes, because you keep playing yourself, playing yourself. Next play yourself, it's going to be off the field. They have moved you, dog. And they keep telling you to do what? Shut up. Do your job. Y'all need to mind your business and get focused right. on what you got to do. What you got to do, dog. You got to get out of everybody's business and do your job. Because they don't respect you because you ain't doing your job. You got too many busts, dog. I'm sure they told you. They told me that they need, just need to help you rush. Dog, you don't, you busting. You know how many busts you have a game, dog? I mean, I feel like that's not my, like it's not my fault as far as you learn. Yeah, it, okay, it, it's your fault for your bust, for your bust. See, every time we say something to you, you put somebody else in it. Tell us you heard that. Do your job. We want you to do your job. Quit worrying about it. Everybody else. It's admirable that you're coming in here and you have a voice for everybody else, but it's also, we need to focus on talking. 
this team's gonna take care of itself because you don't understand the layers of this team's gonna change. Everybody, everybody's taking notice of everybody. That don't mean because some you might think slide. That don't mean it slid. This team is not gonna look in the fall like it look right now, and it's not gonna be half the dudes in the locker room right now, and that's including a bunch of people that we brought in to, because we just they, they ain't who we thought they were. Don't be one of them. Ball man, do your job. Everybody's evaluated right now. If we could get a better player, we gonna get them, and that's what we're doing right now. But nobody blame nobody. Just do your job. Do your job. An even bigger concern exists among the 12 disciples who were brought in to change the program. Many are becoming a part of the problem rather than the solution. Basically, guys, want to get you guys over here together and just kind of talk about the academic situation, all right? It's in dire straits. So all you guys that are Fs and Ds right now that you've been put on that critical list, there's almost no survival for you right now, none. First change got to be with you. You got to take academics a little bit more seriously than what you've been taking it. If you don't, you ain't gonna be a part of what's going on. We gotta do a better job as coaches in picking guys for character, because half of y'all don't have character. And when you don't have character, you're not gonna do your schoolwork. You're not gonna be on time. You guys are disrespectful. You're not doing your work. Because I thought we as coaches did a better job into picking guys not only could play, but guys that have character. But not all y'all can play, we have found out. And not all y'all have character. So now, what do you do if you're a coach? What do you do if you're a hustler? What do you do if you're a player? You cut your losses. Huh? So that's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to cut my losses. And I cannot believe that we sitting in here having this damn league. You're supposed to come here to change the culture, man. And this is what y'all are doing. So it might be even 68. You know what's happening? So it gets out. You flunking four classes and you can sit back there and shake your head at me, dog? Do you know how foul it is, man? Like, to, to hear chatter? Like, I don't hear that. It's nobody that'll flunk four classes and talk it, though. And you shaking your head at me. And we sitting up here had a meeting, having a meeting to try to help you. And you shake your head at me. We can do better, fellas. This is going to be the last one of these meetings. We got three weeks, right, Jay Phil? Three weeks, bro. Three weeks, man. Y'all get it done. Need help? Go to your coaches. Get it done. Get it done. That's it, fellas. That right there is Dr. Doom, also known as Robert Brazil. The Jackson State alumni wreaked havoc for years with the Houston Oilers, racking up seven Pro Bowls and an induction in the Hall of Fame in 2018. For now, it's four Jackson Staters on this one here. Two of them have signed it already. Bernie Perry and Robert Brazil. You got to find the other two. This one here. We got shoes. You got shoes in here, dude. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 that's going up. No, that's going up. That's you going to make me cry, man. If you make me yeah, cry, man. you make me cry, man. Shit. God, God, God. That's for the best. Watch the wheel. Watch the wheel. Looking that. for the rest. Looking for one of these. Yes. We all dreamed and wanted someone like Dion to do this job. When I heard about him coming to my college, the I love Jackson State, come on, man, I cried. You know what I'm saying? Football at its best. Now, when you can get the best, 
These guys don't know how blessed they are. But what they got to do, they got to do it. They got to be committed. They got to put it in. They got to believe what this man is telling them. And I mean, live, sleep, and die with it. God sent him here for a reason. Not only for Jackson State, I believe, for the HBCUs period. For him to come in and do what he's doing, we all need to say thank you. And it's coaches, players that stay in the game the most. The rules to profit off name, image, and likeness are changing, giving collegiate athletes an opportunity to cash in. With the black hood, y'all gotta really think about this kind of stuff. Like in July, August, they're gonna pass the rule that you can be compensated for your likeness. It's gonna happen. I've already spoken to the governor. It's gonna happen. So if that happened. You got to do your job so I can do mine. Yeah. Say Walmart, and they give you $500 a month or whatever, or $300 a month, say, for whatever, just a gift card. That's $300 more than you had. It don't sound like a lot, but it's a lot. It's 300 times 12, it's 3,600. Last time I checked, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's a lot of money. Like, when the rule get passed, say it's August the 1st. August the 1st of 1201, we want to lay out all our deals. Right. Like, this is what our guys got at a HBC. I want them to be paid. I want them to be compensated. I want to teach them the business of marketing. And you talk about leveling the playing field. That's not even leveling it. That's establishing it because no one has done it yet. In 2021, the NCAA is going to allow you guys to be paid for your image and likeness. It's going to happen. It's evident it's going to happen. I want you to ball so hard that you make me go get my hustle hat on for you. But I want y'all to challenge me for the rest of the season and here on to make sure I go get my hustle on for y'all because it's going to happen. Why, why wouldn't it happen? Just because we're at HBCU? Why not us? Let's get in that mindset that you deserve the best too. You deserve a new field. We're going to get that. You deserve new uniforms. We got that. You deserve new helmets. Those are coming. You deserve new everything. That stuff is on its way. Why not y'all? But in order to do that, you got to give us something. You got to be that. Why can't y'all have the same darn mindset? What's stopping y'all from doing that? A woman? The hood? Some weed? Some alcohol? Some attention? Some focus? The schoolwork? What is it? You find out what's stopping y'all, and you eliminate that and focus on your dream and your goal. Why not y'all? Chevy, right? Chevy Silverado? Let them know we expect about 15 of them. We expect this now. 45, we expect this. We expect you to clean up those mistakes. 40, we expect that. Nugget, we expect it. All of y'all, we expect that. We expect it, 74. You got to expect that from yourself. All right? Hey, I believe on three. One, two, no, three. I believe. Swack East division title still up for grabs. Everybody be ready. Everybody be ready. Everybody's live now. Let's go. Touchdown, Alabama AM. What is wrong with y'all, man? What's wrong with y'all? Change at quarterback for Jackson State. It's Quincy Casey. Quincy, Quincy. Don't try to be nobody other than you. How about your boy? Step into the end zone. Warren Newman. Oh, y'all gonna believe me today. In the open, that's Marshall down the sideline. They say yes, he's in. That 38 leg. That 38 leg. You gotta do your goddamn job. Take what they give you. Take what they give you. He finds Newman, and Newman is able to sneak in to the end zone. Communicate secondary. Down the middle of the seat, wow. and that's big play. Say in for the score. This is simple football. This is first grade stuff. Go better than this. Going for the one on one on the outside. Baldwin with the slide push it off, and he's in. Come on, D. Come on, D. He finds a man, and that was easy. In you got to be kidding me, man. You got to be kidding me, dog. Casey finds a man in the back of the end zone for the score. That's Warren Newman. Secondary talk. Linebackers talk. Everybody talk. Another score on the board. What can we do that y'all will mess up? A career high five touchdowns for a quill glass. He is just gash. This Tigers defense. Are y'all watching the game? And a little cheap shot play between the whistles. Mr. Miller. Get him off the field, man. Get him off the field. Hey, get out of here. They wanted a piece of him, and they've bitten off a whole lot. The final in this one, 52 to 43, Alabama AM. and m We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. Come on. Go 
told you I can't do the quitting. <laughs> it's on you now, baby. It's on you now. On the next episode of Coach Prime. Welcome to the revelation. They like to play football, but they don't love the game. It don't matter to them like it matters to us. There has to be an ending before there's a beginning. This is the end. There's so many things that we deal with that has nothing to do with football. And trust me, we're going to win a lot of games in due time.